you've always been a real key piece on really good teams, really good teams, whether it was Vegas and you helped them get into the cup final, whether it's here in New York, now it's in Mini. I remember the day that you got traded to Mini, you and I spoke. How much better has it been playing in Minnesota than you even thought it would be? Honestly, I always thought it would be fun playing here. This this team plays the exact mm. style that I like. There's some big bodies that like to run around. Our system is, you know, hunting D, uh, which is right up my alley. And then, you know, we got some skill up front. We got some new faces I've been chipping in. We got some good uh, good guys on the blue line. Our, our goaltending duo has been unbelievable. So uh, I, I've always had a lot of respect for this team. I remember uh, when we played them when I was with Vegas, that was a hard-fought series. You know, they took us to seven games, and mm -hmm. uh, they pushed us to the brink. So um, always had a lot of respect. Always, uh, always loved how this team's played. So I, I feel like I've been uh, fitting in pretty well. I know he's, he's been hurt the last two games. Uh, Kirill Kaprizov, we were just having a conversation in the last yeah. segment about best players in the world, and there was a lot of people pumping the tires of Kirill Kaprizov. You played with top-tier mm -hmm. players over the course of your career. I mean, Sidney Crosby is someone that you've been in the same room as. Where is Kirill Kaprizov for you? Like, how good is this kid? I mean, he's, he's unbelievable. The, the one thing I, I like about him the most is you know, he's obviously not like a massive guy, but for a, a highly skilled player like him, he is not afraid to go to the dirty areas. He's in the corners. He's grinding it up. Guys go after him, and, and it you can tell that when guys go after him, it, it gets him going. Like, it fires up when guys play him hard. And I think that's my favorite part about him because, you know, a lot, of, a lot of superstars, they get played hard, and sometimes, you know, they shy away, especially, these, you know, this younger generation. I think you can get them off their game by playing them hard a little bit. Uh, he's, he's the exact opposite. He... He feeds off that, so uh, I, I, lo I love his game. A very football family. Obviously, your dad played pro. Your brother plays pro. How, and you played football growing up, too. And you just mentioned hunting D. So from a football perspective, how does that imp impact, really, and influence your game? Are you more of a free safety? Uh, where do you see yourself on the ice and how the football kind of translates into your style of game? I'm a linebacker. I'm just hunting people just going yeah. for the kill shot every day yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's it if you want me to pull me in free safety that's fine i'll read it quick but then yeah. i'm hunting again so uh yeah. no it's you know that, that's that's part of our system is is a heavy forecheck and uh you know obviously that that plays right into my hands i'm going for a kill shot mm -hmm. every day will be the quote i use when yeah. i tweet this out on twitter so later good. but um, you know, so I'm, curious, I'm curious, Ryan, your thoughts on the conversation that came out of the GM meetings this week, the idea that, mm -hmm. you know, if there's a clean hit and someone picks a fight, that, they, they, you know, the refs should throw out an instigator penalty or penalize the player for creating a scuffle after a clean hit. I don't think that that is an effective solution. Um, what's your take on it? Do you think that that would, that would work? Well, I, I don't – if you're going to say – if you're going to say there's a penalty after a clean hit for a fight, then when are you going to fight? So now only stage fights allowed? Or are you just trying to get rid of fighting altogether? Because it's not, yeah, that, that's not going to work at all. You try and get fighting out of hockey, I'm telling you, some of these superstars are going to get laid out. You're going to be missing guys like, you know, Agreed. Crosby and, you know, McDavid's hard to catch. But, you know, one of these days, you know, he might catch a knee if there's no repercussions for it. And, uh, and then what? And then all these GMs are going to be begging for fighting to get back. And, you know, guys like me are going to have to get shoved back in the league. So, uh, I think it's a slippery slope the way they're going right now. Yeah, you know, Mike Rupp was talking about this on the show totally yesterday, and I, and I wonder if you would agree with him. The point he brought up as well is that if that's the case, then people are going to take advantage of that because they're going to go out trying to run, to your point, superstars, totally. big-name players, in the hopes that either, A, no one's going to do anything because they don't want to get a penalty, or they're going to do something, and then they're going to be in the penalty box, and you're going to be on the power play after you just laid someone out cleanly. Do you agree? Right. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess my question for them is, when is the appropriate time to fight them? Like, do you, do you want to, are you going to throw out the fourth lines to start every shift or, you know, the beginning of periods and have stage fights come mm -hmm. back? Because, you know, you're trying to get rid of those. So I, I guess that would be my question for them. I, I couldn't agree more. I, I know the value that players like yourself bring to the table, not only for the morale, and, and not only then also making your teammates feel secure, but creating time, creating space, wreaking havoc on the opposing players, and in the case of you, chipping in offensively as well. Look, Revo, you were shirtless last night. I don't know if you were walking for Versace on the runway or you were walking for Givenchy or whatever it was on TNT last night. 
but you're Jack. You still look like you're 24. So what's the regimen been? Because listen, there's a lot of players that tune in and watch this show. You got to give us a little bit about your regimen because you you still stack. I, I said it last night. This body is not an accident. I work hard on it all summer, and I uh, I try and keep it going. So uh, I take a lot of pride in uh, I take a lot of pride in this body. You know what? The way I play, the miles yeah. I put on this body, and you know the the amount of hits that I've laid. Uh, it it yeah. it has to be durable. And you know, knock on knock on wood, I haven't had uh, too many serious injuries, but. Uh, I think that's because of, you know, the, the way I work out in the summers and uh, and how strong I keep my body. So, um, yeah, if, if I if I stop doing that, it's going to be game over for me. I'll be uh, I'll be in a wheelchair. Talk to me about the well, well, hey, well, oh, go just, ahead, Kato, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry, Jack. Just let me get a quick follow up on that. So, OK, so are you a weights guy? Are you a circuit weights guy? Do you do circuits? Are you weights Pilates? Are you hot yoga? Like what? Give us a little something for a lot of the young players that are looking up to a player like yourself with the longevity that you've had? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I work out a little different than most players just because of the style I play. But yeah, like, you know, there are mm -hmm. days where I'm uh, I'm going to the gym, I'm just throwing some dumbbells around, you know, I'm doing chest, I'm doing a day of shoulders, a day of arms. Uh, you know, I, you know, people chirp me for that, but, you know, I my body needs that. You know, if I'm if I'm running guys seven, sure. eight, nine, ten, ten times a game, you know, totally. that's hard on the body. And if it's not strong enough to hold up, then... I'm going to be injured all the time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there there are days where I'm True. I'm sitting there just doing upper body and uh, you know, getting strong and um obviously I think my my lower body stuff has changed over the couple, last couple of years just because of how fast the game's gotten. Um, you know, doing a lot more mm -hmm. jumps, a lot more sprints, a lot more weighted vest stuff, uh, a lot more sprints on the ice, mm -hmm. but yeah, for the upper body it's uh you know, a lot, so there's a, definitely some powerlifting in there. I'm sure you're not in public gyms or nice. anything like that that much, but hopefully your gym etiquette is good. I just had a conversation like an hour ago oh, about no, gym I'm, etiquette. I, I am definitely in public gyms. Uh, okay, public so gym. what is your biggest, like, most annoying, like, gym etiquette <laughs> fail? Because I could create oh, I a list it. of, like, I ten things. The, the, the guys that – so <laughs> there's a guy at my gym in Vegas. He will try and find a good-looking girl, and he'll start working out next to her, but he'll just start shadow boxing. And I've seen this, I've seen this so many times. The guys will just start shadow boxing and doing like these these half ass kicks that and, and you know when you look at this guy shadow boxing, yeah. like, I would whoop you up if you got into a fight. And it just it drives me crazy. So th that that's my number one. Does he not know who you are? Bro, does he no, not no, know who you are? He's not doing it to me. He's not doing it to me. I just I just No, see I know, it, I know, so. I know, I know. But yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I mean, with you lurking in the waters there, like, you know, have a little common sense. Jack, take it away, man. That's hilarious. <laughs> I, I'm just picturing now Ryan Reeves in a gym being That's like, funny. should I go over to this guy and just be like, first of all, your form is terrible. You would get dummied in a fight. I just want you to know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Honestly, there, there are least some times where I'm sitting there and you can just see me go. <laughs> Come on, what are we doing here? Oh, uh, Jim Stories uh, with Ryan that's Reeves. Hilarious. That's what I've yeah. turned this interview into. But uh, I'll go back to the hockey because the Minnesota Wild are on an absolute tear. I mean, 14-game point streak, longest in franchise history. The goaltending has been sensational. Mm. The last three games, you haven't even had the superstar that is Kirill Kaprizov. What is it that's just been clicking so well for the team over the last couple of weeks? We, uh, you know, I think we've realized the strengths and uh, strengths of our team, and that's our D zone. We, uh, you know, when we're playing our best, we're not giving up a lot. We're not giving up a lot of goals. Um, you know, before, I think at the beginning of the streak, we weren't scoring a ton, uh, but, you know, we're only letting in one or two. And if you're going to do that, then, you know, two or three does the job. So, uh, you know, the last couple of games, we've, uh, we've put a little more in the net, which is good to see. Um, but, you know, I think we have a very good D zone. Uh, we take a lot of pride in it. And I think that's what's uh, been carrying us these last this little streak here. What happened in Arizona at Mullet Arena? Brother Imama was coming to fight. You guys are going to have the tilt. What happened? Did he have the rollerblades on? Like, he had on the leather soles? What happened? Man, like, you know, I, I, like, you, you know how I fight. I'm very calm. Like, I like to see the fight. And, yes. you know, I like to, yes. you know what I mean? He just, like. Yes, I totally first, know what you mean. You know, the first left, like, I blocked and I thought I had him. He kind of pulled out. And then his next right was wild. Like, just <laughs> just wild and just, I don't know. It was, it, I think you just saw in the replay, it looked like it was, like, two feet away from me. And yeah. then he went to his knees, like, well, what am I going to do? Like, he's on his knees. I'm just going to back up because the refs are just going to exactly. break it up after that. So, 
Um, of course, yeah, I, I don't of course. Know. I, it, a little more structure to his fight, I guess. Yeah, I guess he realized in that moment the shadow right. boxing at the gym wasn't quite the same as the... Yeah, maybe, maybe it was him <laughs> I saw, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's a classic no. comedic callback right there. It had to, <sighs> it had to happen. It's, it's funny. <laughs> you're you're going to bring it in full circle, Jackie. Yeah, that's listen, funny. if you... If that's a callback on a T right there. My comedian friend Matt Baker that would appreciate that well. I just did, did well. that. All right, before we let you go, Revo, you told us during the break you're, you're at your daughter's hip-hop dance class. So uh, yeah. we'll let you get back to that. I assume she's a better dancer than you at this point. Absolutely not. I, you, <laughs> you should see me in the club. I'm, I'm tear up that club. Come on now. Okay. Uh, a little tequila I don't believe it. I'll dance all night. I think your daughter's got you in spades, uh, buddy. But, uh, she, she will I, when she's old. So so <laughs> well, listen, we'll let you get back to being a girl dad. Thank you for the time. We always love having yeah. you on. Thank you for being uh, yeah, so thanks, great for man. the game and, and open and honest. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right. We're going to step aside for a quick break. Coming up on the other side, Bruce Boudreaux is going to give me a little insight into the life of an NHL coach. That's next.